Skill 8, Summary Completion, Questions 1 to 6. Listen to the audio, complete the summary. Write no more than one word for each answer. How will you know if A's and B's have entered Australia? We're looking at the diet of the bird called the rainbow bee eater. The bee eater doesn't care what it eats as long as they're insects. But the interesting thing about this bird is that we are able to analyse exactly what it eats, and that's really helpful if we're looking for introduced insects. How come? Because insects have their skeletons outside their bodies, so the bee eaters digest the meat from the inside. Then they bring up all the indigestible bits of skeleton, and of course the wings, in a pellet, a small ball of waste material which they cough up. That sounds a bit unpleasant. So how do you go about it? In the field, we track down the bee-eaters and find their favourite feeding spots, you know, the places where the birds usually feed. It's here that we can find the pellets. We collect them up and take them back to the laboratory to examine the contents. How do you do that? The pellets are really hard, especially if they've been out in the sun for a few days. So, first of all, we treat them by adding water to moisten them and make them softer. Then we pull them apart under the microscope. Everything's all scrunched up, but we're looking for wings, so we just pull them all out and straighten them. Then we identify them to see if we can find any Asian bee wings. And how many have you found? So far, our research shows that Asian bees have not entered Australia in any number. It's a good result and much more reliable than trying to find live ones as evidence of introduced insects. Well, that's fascinating. Thank you, Grant, for those insights. I hope that you might inspire some of our students here to conduct some similar experiments. Questions 7 to 11. Listen to the audio. Complete the summary. Write no more than three words or a number for each answer. What about the modular course? What would I have to do for that? Well, that's where you get the opportunity to study full-time for short periods. That way you can cover a lot of coursework and attend lectures and seminars during the day. And each module lasts for one term, say, about 12 weeks at a time. There are obvious advantages in this, the main one being that you can study in a much more intensive way, which suits some people much better. And how many of these modules would I have to do to get the diploma? The current program is two modules, and then you have to choose a topic to work in more depth. But you can base that on your job, and so you don't need to be away from the office. And how long it takes is up to you. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that you don't have to study and work. You can focus on one thing at a time. Yes, I can see that. It certainly sounds attractive. It would be more expensive, though. I mean, I'd have to support myself without pay for each module. Mm -hmm, that's true, so that might be a problem for you. Look, why don't you talk this over with your employers and then... Questions 12 to 16. Listen to the audio. Complete the summary. Write no more than three words or a number for each answer. So what can be done about this situation? The population in North America is likely to contain an increasing number of elderly women. The research indicates that at present, for women it takes a crisis to make them think about their future financial situation. But of course, this is the very worst time for anyone to make important decisions. Women today need to look ahead, think ahead, not wait until they're under pressure. Even women in their early 20s need to think about pensions, for example, and with increasing numbers of women in professional positions, there are signs that this is beginning to happen. Then research also suggests that women avoid dealing effectively with their economic situation because of a lack of confidence. The best way for them to overcome this is by getting themselves properly informed 
so they are less dependent on other people's advice. A number of initiatives have been set up to help them do this. This college, for example, is one of the educational institutions which offers night classes in money management, and increasing numbers of women are enrolling on such courses. Here, they can be given advice on different ways of saving. Many women are unwilling to invest in stocks and shares, for instance, but these can be extremely profitable. It is usually advised that at least 70% of a person's savings should be in low-risk investments, but for the rest, financial advisors often advise taking some well-informed risks. Initiatives such as this can give women the economic skills and knowledge they need for a comfortable, independent retirement. The increasing proportion of elderly women in the population is likely to have other economic consequences. Skill 9. Multiple Choice. Questions 1 to 4. Listen to the audio. Choose the correct letter. A, B or C. Welcome to Manam Port, where a thousand years of history are brought to life. All the family can enjoy a day out at Manam, visit our copper mine, see models of the machinery it used, have your photo taken in 19th century costume, experience at first hand how people lived at different stages throughout history, and especially how children studied, worked and played. The port of Manam is located in beautiful and peaceful countryside, on a bend in the Great River Avon, and developed here because it's the highest navigable point of the Avon. Boats can go no higher up this river, and proved a handy place to load and unload cargo to and from the sea, which is over 23 miles away. A small port was already established here when, about 900 years ago, Tin was discovered nearby, though it wasn't until the Industrial Revolution, when a tremendous need for metals of all kinds developed, that Manham expanded to become one of the busiest ports in the country. And because it was already so busy, prospectors began to look for other minerals, and by the end of the 19th century, lead, copper, manganese and arsenic were added to the cargoes leaving Manham. In the early days, the ores had been smelted, or processed, in the same area they were mined. But as demand grew, the smelting process required huge factory furnaces, or fires, to melt the metal from the rock, and there was not enough coal in the local area, so the rocks containing minerals had to be shipped long distances. Sadly, in the 20th century, the great port of Manham declined, and thousands of workers were forced to emigrate out of the area. The building at the port fell into disrepair, and the place became almost forgotten. But then the Manham Trust was formed to conserve the historical resources of the area. It organised scores of local volunteers to remove undergrowth to find the original outlines of the installations. It then brought in paid professionals to match installations with maps of the original port complex and to set about reconstructing it. Today, you can see the results of this ambitious programme of restoration. The intention, and we believe this will be realised before the end of the year, is to return Manham Port to the condition it reached at its peak as the greatest copper port in the country. Questions 5 to 8. Listen to the audio. Choose the correct letter. A, B or C. Good morning. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to say a little about two exciting new developments in the city. The Brackenside Open Air Swimming Pool and the Children's Adventure Playground in Central Park. As many of you may know, the idea for these initiatives came from you, the public in the extensive consultation exercise which the City Council conducted last year. 
and they have been realised using money from the SWRDC, the South West Regional Development Commission. First of all, Brackenside Pool. As many of the older members of the audience will remember, there used to be a wonderful open-air pool on the seafront 30 years ago, but it had to close when it was judged to be unsafe. For the design of this new heated pool, we were very happy to secure the talents of internationally renowned architect Ellen Wendon, who has managed to combine a charming 1930s design, which fits in so well with many of the other buildings in the area, with up-to-the-minute features such as a recycling system, the only one of its kind in the world, which enables seawater to be used in the pool. Now, there's been quite a bit of discussion in the local press about whether there would be enough room for the number of visitors we're hoping to attract, but the design is deceptive, and there have been rigorous checks about capacity. Also, just in case you were wondering, we're on schedule for a June the 15th opening date, and well within budget. A testimony to the excellent work of local contractors Hickman's. We hope that as many people as possible will be there on June the 15th. We have engaged award-winning actress Coral White to declare the pool open, and there'll be drinks and snacks available at the poolside. There'll also be a competition for the public to decide on the sculpture we plan to have at the entrance. You will decide which famous historical figure from the city we should have. Questions 9 to 18. Listen to the audio. Choose the correct letter, A, B or C. Before we start, Spiros and Hiroko, thanks for coming in today to talk about your recent study experiences, and congratulations to you both in doing so well in your first semester exams. Thank you. I'd like to discuss with you the value of the English for Academic Purposes course you did here last year before starting your university course. Uh, Spiros, if I could start with you, what parts of the program have now proved to be particularly valuable to you? Um, I think that having to do a seminar presentation really helped me. For example, a couple of weeks ago in our marketing subject, when it was my turn to give a presentation, I felt quite confident. Of course, I was still nervous, but because I had done one before, I knew what to expect. Hmm. Also, I know I was well prepared, and I had practiced my timing. In fact, I think that in relation to some of the other people in my group, I did quite a good job, because my overall style was quite professional. What about you, Hiroko? Mm, that's interesting. In my group, I was really surprised by the way the students did their presentations. They just read their notes aloud. Can you believe that? They didn't worry about their presentation style or keeping eye contact with their audience. And I remember that these things were really stressed to us in the course here. So how did you approach your presentation, Hiroko? Well, to speak frankly, I read my notes too. <laughs> At the time, it was a relief to do it this way, but actually, when I had finished, I didn't feel any real sense of satisfaction. I didn't feel positive about the experience at all. That's a pity. You know, although I was pleased with my presentation, I am not so pleased with my actual performance right now in the tutorials. During the whole semester, I've not said anything in our tutorial discussions. Not a word. Really, Spiros? Why is that? Do the other students talk too much? It's partly that, but it's mostly because I have had no confidence to speak out. Their style of speaking is so different. It's not the style we were used to during the course. They use so many colloquialisms. They're not very polite, and sometimes there seems to be no order in their discussion. Also, they are very familiar with each other, so because they know each other's habits, they can let each other into the discussion. You're right, Spiros. I have experienced that too. For most of this semester, I've said absolutely nothing in tutorials. But recently, I've been trying to speak up more, and I just jump in, and I've noticed an interesting thing. 
I've noticed that if they thought my point was interesting or new, then the next time they actually asked for my opinion, and then it was much easier for me to be part of the discussion. Oh, that's great, Hiroko. I hope that happens for me next semester. I'll have to work hard to find some interesting points. What helped you to find these ideas? I think that one thing that helped me with this was the reading. I've had to do so much reading this semester just to help me make sense of the lectures. At first, I couldn't understand what the lectures were talking about, so I had to turn to the books and journals. Every night, I read for hours. Using the lists of references that were given, and I made pages of notes. At breakfast, I read and read my notes again. This habit has helped me to follow the ideas in the lectures, and it's also given me some ideas to use in the tutorials. But I did so much reading anyway. I don't think there's any time left over for anything extra. My reading speed is still quite slow, though I'm much better at dealing with vocabulary than I used to be. What else do you think we could add to the course program to help with this reading problem?、Mm, uh, there's not really anything because it's my problem. I remember we were given long articles to read. We didn't like that, but now I realize that reading those long articles was good preparation for the things I need to read now. Also,、uh, in class, we regularly had speed reading tasks to do, and we kept a record of our reading speed. So the teachers were encouraging us to work on that. That's true, Spiros. But what we read could have been different. Sometimes in the English class, I felt frustrated when I had to read articles about the environment or health or education, because I wanted to concentrate on my own field. But we didn't read anything about engineering, so I think I wasted some time learning vocabulary I didn't need. Mm, but surely the strategies you were taught for dealing with that vocabulary were helpful. Yes, but psychologically speaking, I would have felt much better working on reading from my own field.、Mm. What do you think, Spiros? Oh, I agree. That would have helped my confidence too, and I would have been more motivated. It was good, though, that we could work on our own topics when we wrote the research assignments. Okay, let's move on to writing now. And...